Hello students, my name is Dr. Gajendra Purohit and you are watching our YouTube channel where I cover topics for engineering, mathematics and BSc if you are preparing for any competitive exams which require advanced mathematics. Then our channel is very helpful for you. I have just started uploading the Infinite series 2.0 in which I will again provide the explanation for the concept of the series. In this, I have already uploaded a lot of videos about infinite series covering what they are, when they converge or diverge and the tests. For example, P-series test, comparison test, D'Alembert ratio test and geometric series test, etc. There are many other tests that I have uploaded. As you can see, in today's lecture, I will explain to you about the Rabis test and what exactly this test entails. Also, when it should be applied and the conditions under which it determines if a series converges. I will explain everything. So, pay attention. <music> So, let's talk about the Rabis test. If we are given an infinite series, which consists of positive terms, then it will be convergent. If limit of n as n tends to infinity, n un upon un plus 1 minus 1 is greater than 1. If its value is less than 1, then this will diverge. And if it is equal to 1, then the test will fail. But a question might arise that, when do we apply this test? So, I want to tell you that, if you have studied the D'Alembert ratio test, then it says that, if we have an infinite series given to us, and its limit un plus 1 upon un and if I discuss this infinite series where n is equal to 1 to infinity and you have to talk about its convergence. If we calculate its value and if its value is less than 1 then it converges and the limit n tends to infinity. un plus 1 upon un its value is greater than 1 so it is convergent right and here it is divergent. Students if you haven't seen the video then you can watch it in itab and limit n tends to infinity if the value of un plus 1 upon un is equal to 1. Then students, this test will fail and we apply Rabe's test here. Now, I want to inform you about one more thing that we also have a logarithmic test which also can be applied if in case of our D'Alembert ratio test fails. But however, you might be wondering that when should we perform Rabe's test and logarithmic test? How will we know this? If we have the un term here and if power 1 is coming inside that term, in that case, we will apply Rabe's test. Now, suppose we get its whole square and whole square of the total, then in such cases, we use the logarithmic test here, which I will tell you in the next video. Clear? So, we will discuss how we will apply this here. Now, let's discuss how we will solve this question, which we have been given here. So, what we will do first, we will find the nth term of this. So, here to find the nth term, we have 1, 3, 5. And since it's an odd term, then obviously it will be 2 and minus 3. If you need to check, if there is any mistake, then replace n with 2 here. So, 4 minus 3 means 1, right? When you put 3 here, then we will get a term till this point. So, this is how you can look at it. Here we have these even terms. It is 2 here, it is 2, 4 and it is 2, 4, 6. So, this term that we get will be 2, 4, 6, right? So, this will be 2 and minus 2 and here, if we talk about this 3, 5, 7, so obviously this is greater than this, right? So, one term will be greater and we will have this when we put n plus 1 in place of n. So, 2n plus 2. So, this will be 2n minus 1, right? It will be its nth term we will write it as un. So, this is un plus 1. So, wherever there is n, we will get un plus 1. So, we will write it like this. Now, what we have here is the D'Alembert ratio test and it is limit n tends to infinity. un plus 1 upon un, notice that we divide it here. So, it will come on top and it will come in denominator. So, you can see these terms are being cancelled from our side. And this term and this term are also getting cancelled out here. So, in this we have this term remaining above and this term will remain below. Now, when we put its value here, so, what will be the value of this limit at n tends to infinity? So, on the top of the fraction, we are left with 2n minus 1 upon and it will be 2n and here we have 2n plus 1 and it is upon un. So, this 1 divided by 2n will be placed underneath. This will become 1 upon 2n minus 1. Here, this 2n minus 1 will go up. So, from here, we will have the value as limit n tends to infinity. Whole square of this 2n minus 1 upon it will be 2n into 2n plus 1 when you put n tends to infinity. So, this 2n square will come out as 4n square and so does this 2n square. So, they cancel each other out. And when its limit is 1, then it suggests that the value will be 1. And if the value is 1, then the result of the test is, it will be failed, right? So, if the test fails, we will use Rabe's test. And how do we use Rabe's test? So, what we will do here is we take the limit as n tends to infinity. So, we have n into un upon un plus 1. We have un plus 1 upon un. Its inverse is required here, right? So, if we reverse this, what will we get? 
2n followed by 2n plus 1 and in the denominator we will have whole square of 2n minus 1 minus 1 and we will calculate its value and then we will check if it is greater than or less than 1. So, this will be the limit n tends to infinity and here we will open this n then we will get 4n square plus 2n minus. Students, here we have this LCM of whole square of 2n minus 1. We took the LCM of this upon whole square of 2n minus 1. When we simplify this, it will be limit n tends to infinity. This is n. This will be 4n square plus 2n and when we simplify it, we will get this. 4n square minus 4n plus 1 divided by this will be 2n minus 1 whole square. As we solve this, this 4n square will cancel out with 4n square. We will simplify this. So, remember, this highest term should cancel out. If the highest terms do not cancel, then there is an issue. Right? Understood? So, we have 2n and here we will have 6n and this minus will go inside. So, this will be minus 1 upon 2n minus 1 whole square. So, here we take n common. After we take n as common factor, we have limit n tends to infinity. So, I take n as common. This will be n square 6 minus 1 upon n. Now, from inside as well, I take n as common. So, it will become n square and this will be whole square of 2 minus 1 upon n. As you put n tends to infinity. <coughs> n square gets cancelled with n square. It will become 0. So, we start by considering the value here 6 by 4 and when we simplify 6 by 4, we get 3 by 2 which is greater than 1 and it indicates that the series will be convergent by the Rabe's test. So, next here I will try to explain another question to you as you can see. So, here we are given a series like this and you need to figure out if this series is convergent or not. So, first we will write down the nth term. This will be 2 square, then this will be 4 square, then this will be 6 square. It will carry on like this. Continuing in this manner till this term of 2n minus 2 because once you put 2 in place of n here, we will get this exact value. Well, here this term will also have a square on it divided by. So, now let us look at this sequence here. See, we have 3 and 4. Then we have 3, 4, 5, 6 here and also continuing here as well. And then see here 3, 5, 7 and 4, 6, 8. Notice how each term is appearing in these sequences. So, students, take a look at this sequence that we have. It is 3, 4, 5, 6 and so on. When we compute the value for this sequence, it results in 2n minus 1 because as soon as you substitute 2 for n here, we have 4 minus 1 equals 3. And for the sequence 4, 6 and so on, it will be 2n since we are substituting n, so it aligns. And we have the nth term. <coughs> so, here we will have its nth term, right? If we consider this un, as we go along, let us discuss this un. So, this un that we have here, it is 2 square and 4 square, then 6 square up to whole square of 2n minus 2 divided by, and if we consider this, so it will be 3. And then 4, then 5 and 6. Following this, here it will be 2n minus 1 into 2n, right? If we discuss un plus 1, then this term will be, let me change the color. So, in place of n, you need to put n plus 1. So, this will be 2 square, 4 square, 6 square and it will be whole square of 2n minus 2 and next, we will put n plus 1 in place of n. So, students, it will be square of 2n. Similarly, when we discuss this, then 3, 4 and 5, 6 and it will be continued like this. We will put n plus 1 in place of n. So, it will be 2n plus 1 and here we will put n plus 1, then it will be 2n plus 2. So, students, here we apply D'Alembert ratio test, right? And this D'Alembert ratio test is limit n tends to infinity. This will be un plus 1 upon the value of un. Students, notice which terms are being cancelled out here. So, we have these terms cancelled out. If you look here, you will notice that here we have this term because the preceding term was 2n minus 1 and 2n. So, all these terms will be cancelled out and this term will remain so here, if I try to find its value, so from this point onward, what value are we looking to determine? It is the limit as n tends to infinity and it can be simplified to 2n squared divided by 2n plus 1 multiplied by 2n plus 2. Now, we will find the limit of this. So, 2n square will come as common, so it will be 4n square anyway. These 2n will be taken common, so 4n square will be cancelled. So, here we will get its value as 1, which means that here the D'Alembert ratio test will be considered as failed. Now, we will apply the Rabe's test here and what does it state? It says that limit n tends to infinity. <coughs> Multiplying n by this expression will be un upon un plus 1 minus 1, right? And we will find out whether its value is greater than 1 or less than 1. So, that is what we will look at. So, it is limit n tends to infinity and here we have n and here we have un plus 1 upon un but here we have the inverse. So, we will write the inverted value, right? And if we invert it then here we will get 2n plus 1 and here it is multiplied by 2n plus 2. 
divided by here we have whole square of 2n in the bottom minus 1. Now let's multiply this and simplify it. You can take the LCM first of all. So n tends to infinity it will be n when we take its LCM. So this expression results in 2n square and when we expand this it will be 4n square and this will be 4n into 2n equals 6n plus 2 and when we take the LCM of it then it will be minus 4n square right. Its LCM will be 4n square so the highest degree terms cancel out which is a good thing. So here we have limit n tends to infinity and this will be n and we have its value as 6n plus 2 upon whole square of 2n. We will take n common from here. So limit n tends to infinity. If we take n common then we get n square 6 plus 2 by n and simplifying it will give 4n square here. So 4n square cancelled and when we put n tends to infinity we will have 0 here and the value we get will be 6 by 4 which simplifies to 3 by 2. Since it is greater than 1 then what does this imply about the series? It means that the series is convergent. So we can solve it quite easily in this way. In the next question we are given test the convergence of the following series. We have the same question. So here what will the nth term of this sequence be? It will be 3, 6, 9 and so on continuing in this way. So students here we have 3, 6, 9. So the term that we have here will be 3n minus 3, right? Because as soon as you put 2 in place of n, then we have 3 here divided by and we need to understand what we have here. This will be 7, 10 and so forth with similar terms continuing in this manner. If you calculate it's a PGP, if we discuss this, it is an arithmetic progression where a is 7 and d is 3 and we know its n term will be n minus 1 into d. So we know this will be 7 and here we write n minus 1 into 3. Thus, when we will simplify this further, it will be 3n and here we will get plus 4. So, students, let's proceed ahead. Here, putting 2 in place of n should give 7, right? So, that means this is 3n plus 4. So, here you'll see. So, if we put 1 in place of n, we will get exactly n minus 1 terms. So, this will be 3n. And it will be plus 1. Then only by placing 2 in place of n, we will end up with 7 at this point, right? So, if we replace n with the next term and what would that next term be? it would be n is equal to 3 and so we get 10. It means where would it go up to? It will go to 3n plus 1 and the power of x we have here will be n minus 1 because as we have the second term. So it is x power 1, right? Because we have third term. So it will be x power 2. So it will be n minus 1, right? We need to keep this in mind. Now, we will consider what exactly is the value of un plus 1 and un term. So, First of all, I will take this un term, so it will be 3, 6, 9 in this way and we will have 3n minus 3 upon and here this will be 7, 10 like this. And here we have, so this is 3n plus 1 and x power n minus 1. Now what do we do here? So I will write un plus 1 term. One term larger than un plus 1, so that term will be 3, 6, 9, right? And this will be 3n minus 3. And when we will replace n with n plus 1, then this will be 3n term divided by, this will be a 7, 10, it will continue like this. 3n plus 1, so the next term of this will be 3n plus 4 and here it will be x power n, right? Now what do we do is we apply the Delembert ratio test here and in this we have limit n tends to infinity. un plus 1 upon un, so this will be limit n tends to infinity, right? Here we will find its value. So we know that if we divide these two, then these two terms are cancelled and these two terms are cancelled too. See x is also cancelled from here. You will see this term x is cancelled as well. So one x will remain on the top, right? So if we have one x left on top, then we are left with 3n upon 3n plus 4 and here we have its value as x. Now putting limit and tends to infinity will be, once we take n common here, so this will be 3 by 3 and 4 by n. Here we will get the value of this and this will be x, right? So students we know that, by Delembert ratio test, if the value of x is less than 1, then it indicates that it will be convergent, right? And if the value of x is greater than 1, then this will be divergent, we know that, right? Now the moment, x becomes equal to 1, right? As soon as x is equal to 1, this test that we have here, it fails. And when that test fails, which one do we turn to? We turn to Rabe's test. And this Rabe's test is limit n tends to infinity. So, here we have n un upon un plus 1 minus 1 and now we will find the value of this, right? So this will be limit n tends to infinity. Since this n is outside, so here we have un upon un plus 1. We only need to write the value of n since x is 1. It should be in reverse because the numerator is un divided by un plus 1 and here we have un plus 1 divided by un. So when we flip it, we get 3n plus 4 upon 3n at the bottom minus 1 
now look the highest degree terms need to cancel each other out i have already explained that so limit n tends to infinity we get n and when we take its lcm it will be 3n plus 4 minus 3n upon 3n this 3n will cancel out with this 3n we are left with this gets cancelled and you will see that n will also be cancelled so the limit n tends to infinity students here we will get 4n upon 3n that is 4 by 3 and it is greater than 1 that means that it will be convergent when x is equal to 1 the question here is whether the series will converge in this case you are being asked when the series will converge it will converge when the value of x is 1 and also for values less than 1 and up to 1 it means it includes values equal to and less than 1 and when does it diverge when does divergence occur when we have x greater than 1 we are also asked about the interval so this interval form what will we write minus 1 to 1 and here it is a closed interval and when will it diverge when the range extends from 1 to infinity we can understand it as an interval form now let's examine another question and see how we approach it here we have this sequence where it is 1 and we have 4 here 7 and 10 here so next we determine its nth term and we can see it is a geometric progression so here considering that this a is equal to 1 and this d is equal to 3 so we know a plus n minus 1 into d so this will be 1 plus n minus 1 into 3 so we will get 3 n minus 2 here now in place of n we will put 1 and c if we start by putting the value as 1 then we get 1 here and if we put the value as 2 we get this term here so we are getting the term we're discussing so the nth term we get is 3 n minus 2 divided by if you discuss this 3 and 3 x so ultimately keep in mind that the 3 multiplies all the terms so no need to worry about this it will be 3 6 9 here right so that's the term that we will get and here we will have 3 n if we substitute 1 for n we get 3 and 1 in the numerator gives us 1 right so we can write it this way now we will write its un term and un plus 1 term and check them i'll write the un term below so students it will be 1 4 and then 7 here and it will progress like this and it will be 3n minus 2 upon here we have 3 6 9 and this will go up to 3n and we will write the un plus 1 term up here right so the un plus 1 term that we have is 1 4 7 and so forth so we are going to put n plus 1 in place of n so this will be 3n minus 2 anyway and here it will be 3n plus 1 right and divided by and here we have 3 6 9 continuing till this 3n so the next term we will get is 3n plus 3 now here we apply the delembert ratio test and this delembert ratio test will be limit n tends to infinity if we put un plus 1 upon un you can see here that which terms are getting cancelled you can see here that this term and this term are cancelling and these terms are cancelling out each other as well so the term that we will be left with is limit at n tends to infinity we will be left with 3n plus 1 upon 3n plus 3 and when we check its limit then as you know we will be left with 1 now we will apply the rabes test here so students from the rabes test its limit at n tends to infinity it will become n into un upon un plus 1 minus 1 so this is the value that we get so limit n tends to infinity and it will be n un upon so here we have to write its inverse so we will have 3n plus 3 over here and we have 3n plus 1 minus 1 down here now let's take the lcm and look at the highest degree term here if it cancels it should cancel otherwise there will be issue we have 3n plus 3 minus 3n minus 1 upon this will be 3n plus 1 so this 3n from this 3n gets cancelled out here so we will try to solve this here as n tends to infinity this will become n and this 3 will go down to 2 so here you take n common so you will get 3 plus 1 by n these n cancel out and when we put n tends to infinity it will be 0 and from here the value we get is 2 by 3 which means it is less than 1 if it is less than 1 then it will diverge if it is greater than 1 then it will converge so that means this series will be divergent so this is the concept of rabe's test so students this question is for the comment box you have to solve it and give the answer in the comment box such question often come up in major exams so for more such videos check out the 2.0 series of infinite series you can see the playlist here for the csir net gate and iit jam exams if you want to improve your short tricks then you can watch my videos here and subscribe to my channel thank you so much all of you thank you Bye.